Hey guys, how you doing? This is Benjamin with Benjamin Exotics, and this video today, we're going to be talking about something that doesn't have to do with snakes or ball pythons, which is what we normally talk about, as a motorcycle guy, you know, drives by, um, which is, you know, something to do with leopard geckos, which is mealworm breeding. Now, I'm not going to go into the pros and cons of this video, the only really, you know, I guess, pro to doing this is that it's going to save you lots of money. Uh, there's not really any cons, pretty easy to do, um, but there are a few, you know, tips and tricks uh, of the trade, I guess, that I'll talk to you guys about in this video. So if you are going to breed mealworms, you will have the most success possible. Okay, so first of all, um, there's a few different ways you can build your racks or make your racks for your mealworms, but what I've found works the best and is the cheapest is going to your local, you know, whatever, um, what, what do you call them? Around me, they're called like... Um, I don't even know what they're called. Basically just thrift shops or like shops that get stuff that people don't want anymore and are just, you know, willing to give away basically like, um, like charity. I don't even know what you call them. Uh, there's one near me called, like I just said, I can't remember the name of it. But basically, you know what I'm talking about. Just like, not pawn shops, but you know, Goodwill stores basically is what I'm trying to say. And you can actually pick these guys up. I got these for like five bucks each. And as you can see, uh, they're pretty tall, three drawers high. Um, this one is pink and it had the wheels with it. Um, this one didn't, which kind of sucked. But when you do this, it's very, you know, but you don't even have to make anything. And this is the cheapest way to go. You can build your own wooden racks if you're going really big. But for just small, you know, we're talking feeding 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, maybe 50 geckos. This is going to be the best way to go. Gives you lots of airflow with how tall it is. And they're very easy to work with. And overall, these kind of racks, I would say, are the best way to go when you're selecting, you know, what you're going to house your mealworms in. You could also stack containers, but the ones that pull out like this is the best way that I've seen. Um, that's tip number one. Uh, the second thing, another thing we're going to look at is ventilation. Ventilation is key. Um, it's even more important, you know, snakes need ventilation and it's pretty important for them, depending on what species we're talking about. But for mealworms especially, ventilation is key. If you get any sort of mold in here, you're going to have lots of problems. You can get wheat mites, which are these little tiny white mites that will literally go over the entire thing. And you'll get to the point where you can touch and scrape your fingers like this and you'll have dead mite guts. That's how bad these things get. I'm not even kidding. You will literally not even be able to see. It's horrible. Millions of them will come into your colony if you get too much moisture, as well as mold. Uh, which will kill your beetles, both will, the mold and the mites that can come along with it. And without proper ventilation, it's going to smell a little bit. Um, if you have good ventilation in, you're not going to have much of a smell at all. Actually, I have no smell, to be 100% honest. And you just don't want there to be any, 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 any moisture in here. And when we're using stuff like carrots and potatoes, that's going to happen if you don't have great ventilation. So just go crazy with it. As you can see with these, um, I don't think I did it as much on those guys, but um, just I have the whole front drilled out, a bunch in the front, and then I have rows of four or three going along the sides, so we have tons and tons of ventilation going through. This actually needs to be redone um, where we have them in here, but the top one I didn't do because the top one actually has like extra cracks all around the edges, whereas these guys, as you can see, are more sealed tight versus the top, but that's why that guy doesn't have it. Um, another tip would be that you really do want to gut load your food. Um, you know, use don't go out there and just, you know, use cornmeal and, like, potatoes. Um, now, you guys, I actually, today is kind of a feeding day for the mealworms, so I don't have anything in here right now. But normally I put in, like, carrots, broccoli, which are very high in calcium for your animals. So I can get up here. Um, you know, broccoli, potatoes, carrots, um celery, spinach, all kinds of things I put in here, and I never, ever, ever, ever take them out because the mealworms, you know, the beetles that have the mealworms, of course, will actually lay their eggs on these dried up carrots and stuff. So if you're throwing those away, you're just throwing away eggs, basically. They'll actually do the same thing with these too. So you get rid of these, you're getting rid of eggs. Um, they don't really actually lay it too much in the substrate. Mostly all of the eggs are laid on these. But uh, anyways, you just have to make sure that what's going into your mealworm, which is gut loading, is what's going into your animal. This isn't as much of a tip for you know breeding these guys, but also if you have really good quality food going into these guys, the mealworms are going to be bigger, healthier, more lively, and you're going to have more of them, of course, because you have you know a better food supply. 
Um, another tip would be, and this is a must, for your bedding, you have to, minimum, freeze your bedding for at least a week. And I know that might sound crazy to some people, um, but the problem is, is that all, you know, basically all the beddings I can think of, cornmeal, oats, uh, wheat brand, um, wheat mixes, you know, they all have mites in them. They normally don't take them out at the factories or wherever, not the factories, at the farms that they make, you know, produce these products and stuff. And inside of the bedding or the food actually that they have is a bunch of little mites. And all it takes is some humidity that hits these and you'll be completely infested. Um, I've had to start my colonies over again and again and again and again and again. And it just looks like there's a bunch of little, it almost looks like, see those little white dots right there? That's just small pieces of this corn mix, but it looks just like that, but it's like they're everywhere. I wish you can go online and probably find some pictures of it, but literally, I'll be able to put my finger here and do this, and the guts would cover it so bad you wouldn't be able to see this gray. You will literally get infested by mites. Now, all you have to do is take away that food source and they all die off, but if you're taking away the food source, that means basically throwing away your colony, which I've actually had to do twice because I, you know, thought I could get away with it, didn't freeze, and, you know, just bad things happen. You could either freeze, boil, or, you know, bake uh, these. If you're freezing them, I would do it two weeks. As you're going to be 100% safe doing that, basically. Um, you could boil or bake, but you have to be careful that you don't burn it and that you, you know, don't... It's, I, I just don't like the other two options. To, in my opinion, if you have a big enough freezer, freezing is the way to go. Um, another thing we're going to want to look at is, you know, as you can see, even I have ventilation holes drilled into these. You can leave your mealworms all together in one thing to pupate um, and then, you know, turn into beetles. But I've found that all you have to do is just miss feeding them one day or so, and they're just going to completely eat all the pupa. So what I do is you can get these little lure boxes or whatever these are called. I just got this from Dollar General or the dollar store um, for like two bucks, flat, two bucks, no cents or anything. Um, and you just put your pupa, uh, basically the mealworm chrysalis, or the beetle, yeah, the mealworm chrysalis to turn into beetles in here, and then they'll eventually hatch out. Uh, you don't want to put them in there when they're white because they can get eaten as well. But I normally wait till they brown out to just about that, and then I'll throw them in like I just did with that one. This is the best system I've found. There's other systems, but this is the most effective. And as you can see, on these I have holes, so there's tons of, you know, ventilation and circulation. And this, you know, up here has tons of ventilation because you don't want any humidity getting in. It, humidity itself won't kill them, but the mold that will come and then the, you know, mites will. Uh, another thing that we're going to be looking at is food. Besides feeding them, this is one tip that I've never heard. When you're feeding these guys, you never want to go from having no food to a whole ton of food at one time. Because what I've found is these guys can actually go quite a while without having too much water. Um, like, you know, five, six plus days uh, they've been in here. You know, these guys are probably, you know, uh, two or three days old, some of them. Um, but they can literally go, you know, a few days without water. But the problem is, is that the second you put water in there, they go way too crazy. They go from having no water in their system to a lot of water in their system. And I've found before, just my own hypothesis, uh, that if you have no food like we have right now, and then you put a bunch in at once, and they all come over and start eating it, for some reason, going from no, you know, water in their system to a lot of it, it I don't know why it just kills them uh, very quickly. That's just my own observation. You'll have, you know, your thing. You'll come in the next day and there'll be like half of all the ones that ate a lot or drank a lot would be dead. So, that's my observation on that. Um, besides that, those are just basically the top tips for this. Um, the only other tip I can think of is just go cheap, basically. You, this is, you don't want to go cheap and cut out on gut loading, um, you know, with your calcium and stuff like that. Fish flakes you can also put in there will help with, you know, the nutrition. Um, but buy in bulk with the bedding, with everything you can, buy in bulk because it will save you money. And that's just basically a common sense thing. And that is basically it. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, I didn't say it at the beginning. I probably should have. But if you like this video, please give it a like. And of course, if you like the channel, please subscribe. Um, we upload videos basically every day or every other day. Um, I haven't skipped a week in quite a while. I almost just did, but I decided against it. But hope you guys did enjoy this video and benefited from this information. I wish you guys the most success with breeding your mealworms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.